So good morning, everyone. Thanks for being uh, here. This is uh, the first podcast that uh, kit for sme organized uh, regarding uh, standardization. And uh, today we are here to talk about standardization in the manufacturing sector, adopting artificial intelligence. There will be a series of uh, uh, podcasts that will be organized by, by kit for sme uh, thanks to the cooperation of uh, other European projects. And uh, then this uh, podcast will be uh, shared on IE4 Manufacturing Channel and uh, on uh, each uh, project uh, social channel. Uh, the agenda that uh, we will have today will be um, a brief introduction of uh, what we are doing right now, a presentation of the project that uh, joined today uh, our podcast, and then uh, a briefly uh, discussion about uh, the standards adopted by each uh, project with uh, pro and, uh, and cons, uh, with uh, procedures, uh, methods and uh, suggestions that uh, each project is using or uh, used uh, during uh, its uh, standardization task and activity. The main goal of uh, today, so, is uh, here to discuss uh, with, uh, with you, uh, with other partners, uh, about standardization in order to exchange our uh, knowledge and experience and uh, also to try to promote the usage of standards in order to highlight why it could be useful to use standards when we are several companies that are working together. Olonix is organizing this because we are task leader of standardization in kit for sme project. And uh, as I said before, this is uh, the first podcast of a series. We will organize um, three events uh, about standardization. In this one, we are going to talk about uh, manufacturing in um, sector uh, adopting AI. In the second podcast, uh, will be about standardization in uh, the circular economy sector and uh, the third one will be uh, standardization and the data management so we will see uh, this kind of uh, correlation this uh, podcast will be shared uh, on uh, each uh, project channel and also through i4 manufacturing channel uh, in uh, all of these events uh, about eight project different project will be involved First of all, let's see what uh, we mean with uh, standardization, starting from the uh, International Organization for uh, Standardization, ISO. Uh, the definition is a standard is a document established by a consensus of subject matter experts and approved by a recognized body that provides guidance on the design, use of uh, performance of materials, products, processes, services, systems or persons. Uh, so the idea is that the standards provide uh, rules, guidelines, uh, or in general, some characteristics that some activities uh, should have in order to achieve the results. So the standardization, let's say that um, that is uh, uh, the final point of uh, a flow uh, that starts with uh, research, with uh, industrial support, and uh, uh, reach the innovation. Uh, thanks to uh, the usage of uh, uh, standard that brings uh, uh, stability and security also for investing. The main benefits that uh, as a kit for SME uh, we found adopting standards are that technologies work smoothly and uh, reliably together. Uh, moreover, we could also use, uh, um, provide economies of scale. Uh, it could be uh, also useful for research and uh, innovation, and uh, it keeps the markets open. Now uh, we will go deeply inside in the projects that are uh, involved in this uh, podcast. Uh, today we have uh, Kit for SME, Trick, uh, Koala, and Rare projects, uh, all projects under uh, Horizon uh, 2020. And, uh, um, and now I will start with the presentation of uh, Kit for SME. Kit for SME is uh, a project that started in uh, October uh, 2020 and uh, it will end uh, next year in March uh, 2024. Uh, we received about 8 million of uh, funding 
and uh, 2.5 million were dedicated to fund actions with uh, um, SME through open calls. In fact, uh, we are now running the second round of our open calls. Uh, we are more than uh, um, we are about 18 partners from eight different uh, countries uh, in Europe, and uh, the consortium is uh, made by four digital innovation hub and four internal pilots that uh, work in the manufacturing sector. This is uh, the geographical distribution. So as you see, um, we have been many European countries involved in our project. And uh, Kid for SME started from uh, um, a survey. Uh, we um, made a survey among uh, several uh, companies in the manufacturing field in order to test uh, their artificial intelligence adoption and uh, readiness. And uh, we tried to uh, rely our survey on five pillar uh, model uh, that are digital and smart factory, data strategy, human resources, organizational structure and organization culture. So the idea was to test um, the usage of artificial intelligence in uh, these uh, uh, several pillars um, for uh, these uh, uh, SME uh, interviews. And uh, these were the results that uh, then uh, create the idea of Kid for SME. So about 39 companies uh, interview and nearly half of the companies uh, didn't have any kind of artificial intelligence solution. Um, so uh, the idea was to create a platform in order to support uh, and uh, push also companies using artificial intelligence to show all the benefits they could achieve using uh, these kind of technologies. Uh, in fact, um, Kid for SME is a platform uh, that uh, pushes to its limit by offering uh, to external actors through also open calls uh, in order to populate uh, its uh, marketplace, to expand its uh, visibilities and uh, also the uh, adoption of all the artificial intelligence that we are offering inside our project. Uh, the artificial the kit for SME uh, targets uh, European SME and uh, mid caps uh, in order to provide them a scope tailor and uh, industry ready hardware, software and organizational kits uh, in order to um, use artificial intelligence in daily activities. Um, so we cover this entire flow like preparing data, developing model, packaging model, validate it, uh, deploy the model and use the model. In Kit for SME, we have uh, four pilots in manufacturing sector. One is in uh, injection mold molding sector, one in quality system sector, the third one in uh, precision and tool sector, and the last one in electrical equipment sector. They have different problems and we, find, we found for them a different solution. And all these solutions uh, are achieved through the usage of artificial intelligence. So, for example, as problems, we had uh, high human effort, uh, defects in division, wizard irregular surface, low reconfigurability. And for each problem, we found a specific solution like human machine mutualism, data augmentation, vision system, shop floor anomaly detection. And all these solutions are achieved through artificial intelligence. In the second part of our presentation, we will see in Kit for SME as well as in the other project how all these solutions were achieved uh, also through the usage of standards. Now I will leave the stage to the second project that is um, joining us today, that is uh, Rick. And uh, so please. Uh, I will leave the stage, to them, the stage to them in order to present their project. Okay, thanks, Serena. Uh, thanks for the invitation uh, for uh, this interesting uh, um, event. So, TRIC is uh, a project uh, which is focused uh, on the product data traceability information management uh, by blockchains, uh, interoperability, and open circular service marketplace. So in the end, here in the title, there is the objective of the project we will be seeing in detail. But um, the idea is to collect the sets of information 
for the traceability and the future digital product passport um, by blockchains and to offer the related services in a marketplace which is dedicated specifically to SMEs. The project started in May 2021 and uh, will last 42 months. So we are just in the middle of, uh, of the project and next review meeting will take place uh, in uh, on November 2023. So, uh, the project involves uh, 31 partners of 11 countries and uh, uh, as you can see, there is a significant presence also of public institutions, first of all, the Italian custom agency in the representation of the European custom agency, but we have also public bodies such as Enea, Politecnico Milan, CNR in Italy, Sintef, Norway, the ITF in, uh, in Germany because uh, it is absolutely necessary to define the standards necessary to collect the data for the future digital product passport and in general for the traceability of the product. Next slide, please. So the objective of the project is to create the infrastructure and all the uh, enablers necessary to release six basic services, which are the traceability of the production per each lot and the related preferential certification of origin for the custom agencies, the uh, circular assessment, the uh, product environmental footprint, the um, health protection compliance, the social and ethical assessment, and in the end, there is also a pilot to exploit artificial intelligence to leverage all these standard data in order to verify the uh, false green claims and to fight against the greenwashing. Next slide, please. So the final goal is to release uh, by a, a user interface uh, which uh, uh, provides uh, the consumers all the information as regards uh, the traceability of the production and its impact uh, and certifications, um, all the information necessary to make uh, informed purchases uh, uh, of textile goods. Next slide, please. Okay, we have uh, two pilots and if you can click Serena, Okay, we have two main pilots. The first pilot is focused on the traditional textiles and starts from the raw material collection with Schneider Group. Then we have Mark and Fieldy for the transformation from raw material into yarn and the chance for textile and clothing production. And then the recycling will be carried out by Mark and Fieldy. We have a parallel uh, pilot in the workwear which is carried out by Filidea in Turkey. Then we have the transformation from the yarn into, uh, into fabrics by Marina Textile in Spain. And then we have Trotustex, which is a company of the Grassi Group, which uh, transformed these goods uh, into clothing for uh, workwear. But Trotustex is also the company which, at the end of the life, of, mm, will collect the workwear, which will be sent back to Mark and Fildi for uh, the recycling and uh, the second iteration which will be carried out using partially recycled fibers. We have also a small uh, pilot in the food with the support of the Cyprus Consortium in Sisi. Next slide, please. Okay, the idea is to save the data, which, which are usually sensible in a private blockchain, which is based on the Hyperledger fabric, and to uh, save the certifications in a public blockchain, uh, which is uh, based on Ethereum and uh, provided by the Quadras Foundation. The basic idea is that all these data are collected in a standard model, which is uh, compliant with uh, the uh, present legislation and hopefully for the future digital product passport, which we will see later, um, but to keep them mm, private, while only the certification will be uh, provided by the public blockchain and available for the uh, brands which are uh, selling the goods uh, on the market. Okay. 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 Thanks, uh, thanks, thanks Alessandro, for uh, this presentation of uh, Trick. Now I will lead the stage to Caterina uh, from uh, Koala Project. Thank you. <coughs> 
Uh, Koala is uh, um, a project dedicated uh, to uh, the development of uh, a vocal uh, um, intelligent assistant uh, to support uh, uh, manufacturing uh, workers, uh, both for the uh, management of um, manufacturing process like quality control, for example, and for uh, training uh, the new uh, workers to learn uh, how to do their job. Uh, the project started uh, late in the 2020 and uh, it is going uh, uh, toward its end that is planned for September 2023. We have three internal pilots uh, that are uh, really representative of uh, different uh, manufacturing process, both for discrete process industry that are uh, Piacenza for textile and clothing, we are full for household appliances and diversity for uh, chemical uh, products. Uh, the consortium is of uh, 14 partners from five EU countries, Germany, Greece, France, Italy and Netherlands. And the coordinator uh, is uh, the uh, research institute uh, from Germany named Viva. Please. Okay, the uh, Koala solution is a human-centered solution that has in its focus the development of a user-friendly and cooperative digital intelligent assistant exploiting the concept of a crew, creating a crew with uh, the, uh, the human and uh, the artificial intelligence and uh, uh, consists of the composition of trustworthy uh, IE components with a voice enabled digital uh, assistant as an interface for uh, the main task. The graphical user interface is just, is just a fallback uh, for uh, managing complex information that cannot be uh, spoken, for example, like uh, schemas uh, or uh, other type of pictures that are not suitable uh, for uh, um, a vocal assistant, but is just a fallback that is present uh, to manage this type of situation. The idea is to, okay, sorry, uh, objective one. No, no, please. <laughs> I already <laughs> recap it. Uh, we have uh, four main objects. The first is uh, to reduce the number of quality incidents in manufacturing in order to provide a an interactive guidance to solve the quality problems. Uh, then uh, to reduce the time needed for on-the-job training of workers in manufacturing. This is a very uh, huge problem that is uh, resource um, uh, consuming, time consuming, because uh, there is uh, the need of a lot of time by expert workers to train uh, young workers in order to be effective to manage their task. Then to, uh, we have another objective, the number three, that is main, uh, mainly a research objective to overcome barriers and reduce skepticism regarding the use of voice enabled uh, uh, digital intelligent assistance because as you know in uh, manufacturing uh, um, context uh, where uh, blue collars are used to uh, perform the activities manually relying on their uh, own know-how own intelligence uh, it is very difficult to introduce the use of AI. then uh, as a consequence of objective three objective four is to improve competencies of blue collars workers in managing AE opportunities, challenges, risk, and the shop floor. It is an awareness uh, process to be developed. Textile production, the uh, main objective of uh, the uh, Piacenza use case is to support on the job training of new machine operators, reducing the time and cost of machine operator trainings, maintain the workers autonomy, autonomy versus the uh, unquestioned execution of instructions and, and exploit and spread the concept and uh, solution. Uh, so this is uh, the, the main objective. Next. Uh, detergent production, diversity, use case to support towards the optimum configuration of the production line, uh, increase efficiency of production and reduce change over time, capturing the best practice and transferring them between manufacturing lines, 
and tacit line manager uh, knowledge capture informalize and transfer to co-workers again uh, behind the line uh, there is uh, the need uh, to train other workers for this type uh, of manufacturing please white goods production uh, the wheel produce case is focused uh, on the quality control procedure and the use of analytics tools so to adopt a predictive quality strategy, to link quality control of the finished product with design stage and shop floor, and to reconfig reconfigure its production line and facilitate root cause analysis. So here the idea is to use uh, the uh, digital uh, uh, vocal assistant as a team member to support quality uh, procedure and to check and uh, exploit all the, um, the check quality procedures. Thanks. Thanks, Caterina. So we had also uh, an overview of uh, Koala project. And now I will leave the stage to uh, Rara representative that are here today. Yeah, this, Thanks. This is me. Mm -hmm. Hi, uh, my name is Ennis Benaschur. And uh, we are coordinating, uh, I'm from Fraunhofer IWU, and we are coordinating the Rare Square project um, with the title of Human Centered Reconfiguration of production and value chain in fast changing scenarios. And uh, as you can see, our project uh, is just in the beginning um, of the project duration. So we started in December 2023, uh, 2022, 20, of course, sorry. Yes. Mm -hmm. There's a typo. Um, and uh, our project will, will end in May 2026. And we, we are, have uh, about uh, 8.4 million um, funding from the Horizon Europe program. So we are not in the Horizon 2020, we are in the Ho Horizon Europe program. And uh, we are 22 partners from eight different countries. And our project structure is that we have one mini demonstrator to uh, um, yeah, make some fast track testings of the software solutions mm -hmm. and for main demonstrators uh, coming from highly diverse uh, sectors and in the end we want to uh, or we have the aim uh, to have an ecosystem demonstrator uh, to roll out uh, the developed solutions uh, to more than the four demonstrators in the project um what's basically the challenge of our project so uh, it's a part of if uh, drastically uh, short-term change of the market demands uh, coming up um, or a d disruption of the value chain uh, caused by crisis uh, will pop up um, this could be a political pandemic or some natural catastrophes uh, and stuff like that uh, then uh, usually the uh, um, Traffic lights, we call it uh, the traffic lights uh, from the value chain uh, switch to red and uh, the production has to stop. And basically from that point on, we want to uh, fasten up the process to switch back those traffic lights to green. So this is our concept um, using specific strategies and tools. Uh, that uh, the production uh, companies are um, able uh, to react on those disturbances um, and to fasten up uh, the ramp up phase for the production of uh, new products uh, or uh, slightly changed products. So uh, basically, as I, as, as I said, uh, we want to help to switch back those lights coming from the value chain and each single workstation to green um, to fast up the uh, um, yeah, ramp up. And for that reason, we have some key pillars in the project. And the first uh, key pillar we, we see, which is highly important, is that we have an early detection of uh, those upcoming issues, which means we want to use some internal data sources, some external data sources, and connect them together in a uh, AI-based early detection tool um, to give up uh, some uh, prognosis of upcoming issues and uh, the uh, um, yeah uh, influence on on the production or on the manufacturing side. 
um, then uh, we need to support the decision makers uh, on multiple levels of the hierarchy um, to yeah, give them some more information about what is the impact if I change some of the um, production or workstations or value chain partners and stuff like that. And to um, give uh, accurate uh, information about that, we need a system level digital twin, which includes uh, again internal data sources and external data sources coming from the value chain, um, which includes some of the quality processes of the uh, uh, production processes, the intra logistics, but of course the extra logistics as well. And uh, with uh, that system level digital twin, we need to uh, simulate the, the changes in the manufacturing. The, so the reconfiguration of the system uh, to give out the decision makers some of KPIs, uh, which are adjustable uh, for specific indicators like uh, economic or ecolo uh, ecological uh, indicators so that the decision makers have a uh, higher base of information to uh, decide uh, accurately uh, which is the best way to react on this disturbance. And uh, in the end, the last step is the implementation of the reconfiguration of manufacturing and for that reason we need some tools to uh, detect the, the uh, qualification gaps inside of the manufacturing side or the company and of course uh, coming from that gaps we need uh, some uh, upskilling tools to train uh, the workers to the changed workflows um, and that for that reason we want to use some mixed reality um, trainings and for all of these different parts, of course, we need uh, some standardized data, standardized interfaces um, uh, and uh, secured ones. Um, and all of those different key pillars we want to demonstrate in uh, four different use cases coming from uh, representative uh, sectors and roll them out in the strategic objective five uh, for the co-creation platform, which is for the ecosystem of uh, the European companies. So um, basically, if we have a detailed look in the four pilots, so we have uh, one pilot coming from the so-called roommates. Roommates are reprocessing units for medical devices, um, and uh, the partner we are working with uh, is uh, uh, manufacturer of those roommates and he makes the installation and rental services uh, for example hospitals uh, which need to uh, build up new capacities of uh, reprocessing uh, uh, departments or stuff like that. And for, for them, uh, the high challenge is that the uh, units need a high modularity uh, to fulfill the customer needs and the national standards and regulations. Uh, and for that reason, they need um, a fast reconfiguration of the existing modules, but as well, uh, they need a fast reconfiguration of the production of new ones. Um, so it's basically uh, split it up a little bit, but uh, they have to, yeah, have a high flexibility in their product. The second use case partner uh, is from uh, the forming of car body parts and production of dyes. And they have the high challenge that they have a growing demand of models um, with the same global production volume. Um, they have high quality standards with uh, practically zero defect manu manufacturing uh, and high uh, optical um, standards for the products in the end. Um, they have a lot of production on short notice and they uh, need uh, a shorter time to market uh, to uh, be better than uh, the, the uh, other uh, the other uh, car body manufacturers. 
Um, <clears throat> then the third pilot we have in the project is uh, one partner which using the injection molding for the production of child hardware. And they have the big challenge that they ha uh, often have uh, an unavailability of raw material. Uh, and this can be over a long period of time, so they need to uh, uh, change the uh, um, or exchange the raw material with recycled material. Um, they often have sudden changes in the product demands uh, and as well they need to change the designs uh, on short notice. Um, and of course, uh, internally they have a lot of interruptions of the production uh, production lines, and they have to reconfigure their manufacturing site to react on those uh, disturbances. And the last um, pilot in our project is a lathing of customer individual contact lenses. So each single contact lens is completely uh, uh, one. A product, a single individual product, um, and they use for the production of these highly uh, specialized lathing machines. So for that reason, a rapid change in the production is not possible at the moment uh, because of a lack of connectivity uh, and uh, they need uh, solutions to overcome um, those issues uh, to get a flexible and highly automated uh, production line. Um, and for that reason, uh, we have to develop some solutions for, for, for that point as well. So as you can see, we have five, four different highly diverse uh, use case partners, and we try to help them in fast reconfiguration um, of their production. OK, thanks. Thanks for uh, also for this uh, presentation. So now we had um, um, a detailed overview of, of uh, all the projects that are joining today. And now we are going to the second part of our podcast, that is the, the one related to standardization. So we saw at the beginning what a standard is, uh, and now uh, very briefly, we will show which standards are used inside each project and which pro and constraints uh, the consortiums are uh, finding and also the initiatives that uh, they are um, taking um, in order uh, to, to make some standardization activities. I will start from kit for sme Here we, we, we put a list of the standards that are mainly used by the, the partners uh, in the consortium. As you see, um, kit for sme as you remember, it's um, a technical project because we are developing several uh, um, technologies based on artificial intelligence. So the standards that are mainly used are standards related to um, development uh, like uh, JSON, uh, MQTT, HTTP, OPC UA. So, um, and uh, this is a, um, a list that resume all the standards used by the consortium. Uh, then we wanted to highlight also the participation of the partner in uh, uh, some standardization committee. Um, as you see, uh, like all the partners are joining uh, Fiber Foundation, W3C Foundation, Linux Foundation, and uh, ECMA and uh, ISO Foundation. Then we have um, uh, some other partners that are joining other uh, committee. Uh, the idea uh, inside our project is uh, it's to um, to try to cooperate with these uh, standards uh, committee. And uh, in fact, uh, the main goals in standardization we have in Kit for SME are uh, these uh, three. Uh, the first one is um, uh, to make the work uh, related to the data model public and have our data model accepted as a smart model uh, because um, all the project uh, is uh, built uh, on our uh, smart data model uh, because the Kit for SME is a platform. So we 
had to build a um, consistent uh, uh, model. And uh, mm, thanks to the participation of several uh, partners in Fiverr Foundation, uh, we submitted the, the, the Kit for SME data model to Fiverr Foundation, and uh, it was uh, accepted and uh, recognized as uh, a smart data model. Uh, so now, one, uh, once you will go to Fiverr Foundation um, website, for example, we you will find also uh, the Kit for SME smart smart data model as an example of uh, a data model using artificial intelligence. Uh, then uh, um, we wanted, as I said, to um, improve the participation in standardization bodies and to uh, promote uh, our data model as well as our, all our activities. For this reason, we joined uh, HS Booster Services. Um, this could be a useful uh, initiative also for uh, all of you because um, HS Booster is a free service um, promoted by, by the European Commission. Uh, they make some uh, open calls uh, um, very often. And uh, at the Kid for SME, uh, we submitted our um, intention to, to be part of this uh, service, uh, we were accepted and uh, in fact we, we joined this uh, service that consists to be uh, in touch with a standardization expert uh, that is uh, suggesting us some activities, some standards that we could uh, use in our project to promote also to the partner that are not using standards the usage of them. And uh, the third one one is what we are doing right now. Um, the idea we had uh, on how to improve their thoughts about standardization was to organize events with other projects. And for this reason, we organize this first pod podcast and we will organize the other two. So this was very briefly um, the standards used in Kit for SME project and our goals. So to recognize something we did in our project and we did it with our data model and uh, uh, to be in touch with some expert. And I'm here also to suggest you to use the HS Booster service and then um, to, um, to discuss and exchange knowledge and experience with the podcast. Uh, now it's the time to trick, to tell us uh, what they did or um, some suggestion. Okay, thanks Serena. So uh, as regards trick, we have uh, a deep involvement uh, in the topic of the standardization because uh, the uh, five certification which we have seen before, uh, plus the one exploiting artificial intelligence uh, to detect the false declaration, are focused on specific topics which are ruled in some cases by standardization. For first, the preferential certification of origin uh, to support the traceability and to demonstrate the traceability to the custom agency. This is uh, clearly based on the World Trade Organization uh, rules and on the specific customs rules, which are based on the definition of the product and the production by specific standardized uh, codes. And therefore, we have to follow the standardization and the service provided is already compliant. For circularity, we are uh, making an analysis and investigation about uh, the uh, potential standards to adopt, and we are defining the project our proposal because uh, the certification of circularity is not yet defined by European Commission and therefore we have to provide our own position in the project. For the product environmental footprint, we make reference to the PEF, which is defined by European Commission and therefore is a standard, as well as for the hazardous and chemicals and consumer health protection, where we have many rules and standards to follow, first of all, the rich regulation by the European Commission. As regards the ethical and social assessment, there are many standards uh, and in the project we will uh, make reference to the ISO SA 8000 uh, standard. Therefore, already there we are following a precise uh, standard to collect the data. The trick data model is aligned with the current standards, as we have seen, uh, specifically for the PCO, but on the second side for the digital product passport, we will see 
uh, in the next slide. So finally, the trick data are also protected by, uh, by blockchain and are ready for portability between different blockchains. This is very important in order to demonstrate the reliability of the data and the fact that they are not able to be changed in a second time to provide false declaration about the green claims. Next slide, please. So a few words about the digital product passport. So this is a document which will become mandatory following the European eco-design legislation and will be released by the final producer of the goods which will be sold to consumers. But as you might imagine, it must rely on the data provided through the whole value chain from the raw material to the delivery of the final product. As regards the textiles, the, the delegated acts to define the contents are under development and will be released by the end of this year or in the first month of 2024. And Sistema Moda Italia with Euratex, uh, they are working with the European Commission on this document. But mainly the uh, data provided uh, for the DPP uh, should collect uh, evidence as regards the traceability and the provenance of the goods, the footprint, the durability, the warranty, the compliance document, the classes of performance and the durability, and the substances of concern. Um, as you might imagine, in a fragmented sector like textile, it is necessary to collect all this data by each supplier and by each sub-supplier in order to put the brands in the position to release a reliable DPP to the consumer. Probably the DPP will be released by QR code, which will be read by the smartphone in order to provide a direct access to the data. Next slide, please. So this is the idea. Uh, therefore, uh, the important fact is that uh, this information should be standard in order to put the consumer in the conditions to understand the performances of the goods and to compare between different goods. Because at present, uh, there are more than 230 eco-labels present in the European uh, Union, but uh, uh, on the basis of a survey by the European Commission, more than half of these labels are not supported by a concrete collection of the data and a precise, uh, a precise data model and the scientific uh, evidences. So this idea to develop the DPP hopefully will support the consumer to have only one reference standard information as regards the green performances. Next slide, please. Okay, so our solution is uh, aimed to provide the trustful data for the DPP, to uh, collect them into a single server protected by blockchain, and to provide a guideline to follow as regards the data model, the semantics and the structure, which have been defined during the project and uh, are constantly aligned with the ones of the digital product passport. Next slide, please. So uh, we provide a contribution as regards the data model standards, because in some cases uh, for the digital product passport, uh, the data models have not been defined yet. While they are there as regards, uh, for example, the traceability and the path or the chemical and hazardous um, um, uh, materials which are used in the production for some other certifications, such as the circularity, such as the uh, ethical assessment, uh, the Commission has not defined yet the standard and the project has provided the position paper in order to provide also an indication as regards it, specifically as regards the granularity, which should follow the lot of the production in order to be reliable and clearly putting in link the final product to all the components necessary to produce it. The data management is also another fact, um, as well as the legal framework, because uh, the protection of the sensible data and the publication of the certification, as we have seen, exploit two different blockchains in order to uh, be also compliant with the GDPR standard. Okay, next slide. 
So um, I, um, we are collecting a very, very complicated set of data, which are in line with the, the ones of the DPP. So if you can see here with the red dots, there is a clear matrix and exploitation of the same sets of data in order to collect the ones for the DPP in vertical and in horizontal, you can see the certification provided by the trick project and that are available for the certification bodies and for the brands. Final slide, next one. Okay, uh, no, no, before, okay. So what is important to uh, understand is that the standards are cross uh, useful. What I mean is that, for example, the traceability uh, standard should be exploited also to support the other uh, certifications, such as the uh, circularity assessment, such as the PEF, such as also the health protection and ethical assessment. This uh, fact is specifically related with the granularity. Let's make an example. If we collect all the traceability data for a single lot, these data are obviously in uh, relation with the, the circularity and therefore we can provide also a circularity assessment based on the same set of data. But uh, this set of data can be used also for the calculation of the product environmental footprint because as you might imagine, they contain the phases of production and on the basis of the, the phases of production, you can make a, a calculation of the footprint and you can make also a check if the declaration as regards the PEF are reliable or not. So uh, the same is for the ethical assessment, because if the facility is uh, ethically assessed and uh, uh, accepted um, for the um, specific regulation as regards the ethical and social assessment uh, to which the DPP will make reference, this will uh, also mean that the product which has been produced in that facility is ethically uh, assessed. So as you might imagine, uh, it is absolutely important that all the data necessary for the future digital product passport make a reference to a single backbone, which is the traceability, and then on its basis you can exploit the, uh, uh, this backbone to add the additional data necessary for the other certification. So, uh, to conclude, the standardization is absolutely important and now it is object also of the discussion within the European Commission as regards the uh, digital product passport for textiles in the um, decrease which will be uh, published by the end of this year. But it is also important because the cross standardization is mandatory in order to create a set of information which put the company uh, in the position to save time using the same standards and also the public body uh, in the position to make a cross checks uh, in order to verify the uh, green claims and to fight against the greenwashing. Okay. So I try to be very concise. Thanks. Thanks, Please. Alessandro. It was clear. Thanks. Uh, Caterina? Yeah. Uh, so uh, about uh, the uh, adoption of uh, ethics standards, uh, the Koala uh, project used as a reference platform, the AI4EU flat platform, in order to demonstrate uh, with the Y engine, the Y engine is uh, the uh, I engine in or able to understand and process uh, the questions that the vocal assistant receives in order to have and guarantee a transparent use of digital assistance in manufacturing uh, to fulfill uh, the aim of giving best practices on the factory shop floor. Then uh, uh, again, to contribute to these standards that are pretty new, uh, because the use of vocal assistant uh, in the manufacturing domain is at this beginning, uh, we need to turn them uh, into a success story or lesson learned for the development of future transport di uh, digital assistants. Uh, Koala worked uh, a lot uh, to promote our results uh, uh, toward IATIC experts 
always exploiting the AI for AU platform uh, and uh, the demonstrator of uh, the project. And then uh, um, the aim, the final aim of uh, all this uh, job is to trigger or to directly contribute to standardization or regulation activities in this field that is in uh, a continuous evolution. Next slide, please. Nick, okay. Uh, then, uh, uh, of course, uh, we use uh, some IT related standards uh, uh, and uh, we exploited uh, everything uh, was defined under the ISO standards. So for example, the W3C as best practice for web development, the OASIS 21 as best practice instructor and information standards for open collaborative development of a business specification. The OM G as best technology and then engineering practices for software system and business modeling, and the open group of uh, OMI and ODF standards. Next slide. Pros and cons of uh, standardization for trustworthy AI. Of course, uh, the, uh, the pros are faster line reconfiguration, standardize the reconfiguration process of a production line for individual products by capturing the best practice with cognitive advisor and by disseminating best pra practice with the help of a digital intelligent assistance. Uh, the, benefit, the benefits are mainly on the optimization of uh, manufacturing uh, processes uh, for um, fast reconfiguration of the production line. Operators can request advice, explanation, and other information via the digital uh, assistant. In this way, we optimize production speeds, reduce bottlenecks, and the reduced time pressure caused by downtime uh, and uh, um, also the cognitive workload of workers uh, are uh, lighter in solving unpredictable complex production like management tasks. Next. Then again, uh, one of uh, the uh, main aim of uh, Koala is the training of uh, workers and managers for managing production lines. If we are able to standardize somehow the know-how, the tacit knowledge of multiple experienced operators of the same, same production line, defining again best practice collection during training and during production of running and production line according to different operator needs. In this way, we will have uh, big benefits by these uh, standardization activities for the reduction of the time of training uh, novice workers, managers, and so on. Then uh, another big uh, uh, benefit is the AI assisted quality control. Standardize the quality control based on st statical quality defining best practices during training, during production, best practices collection of quality of products, processes, and worker performances. In this case, uh, the um, main and uh, tangible uh, benefits of these standardization activities is the reduction of errors, optimization of quality of product, and the optimization of shop floor, shop floor system and management. Next. Mm -hmm. Of course, every activity has some drawbacks. And uh, in this case, uh, our drawbacks is are represented by the limited adaptability to different sectors and scenarios. Uh, to manage uh, this type of processes by vocal assistance, uh, uh, we need to manage complex multi-company project systems, to think about strategies not uh, only for individual companies, but also for dynamic business systems, and to adapt to different worker education uh, and the skills in using digital systems that are depending on national, regional uh, regulation and practices. Uh, these uh, uh, conditions create uh, a, a barrier for the scalability 
of uh, the system uh, and uh, to the effort needed to create a system that fulfills the needs of a specific uh, uh, factory. Then we need uh, to cope with unsweetened uh, aspects of business. For example, uh, we need uh, to capitalize on growth opportunities from some sectors, uh, and uh, this is a problem to manage uh, budgets uh, and uh, other business uh, issues, to adjust uh, the ups and downs in economic condition at market level, to meet target customer needs, to cope also with AI general distrust and acceptance, uh, and to address the social issue for the preservation of jobs, or consequent reduction of salaries versus the AI as a replacement of humans. Uh, all these aspects of the business are uh, uh, represent barriers for the development of this type of intelligent assistance. Please. Then there are uh, specific ethical and privacy issues. Uh, for example, to adapt uh, to project standard to the different natures and needs of a single solution, a uh, company uh, have to comply with specific markets and uh, regulation. The first one is about transparency based on the nature of the data and the level of sensitivity based on individual scenarios and sectors. So we need uh, to manage both the transparency of uh, data along the value chain, but uh, on the other side also to protect the company know-how and the sensitivity of the data, of the business data. Then we have to manage also the data privacy and uh, its uh, sensitivity level. For example, uh, um, the law uh, doesn't allow to track workers and uh, to uh, measure somehow their performance at their uh, job place. Uh, but uh, uh, we manage this uh, issue collecting data in, in an anonymized way in order to analyze them uh, in aggregated way uh, without reconnected, reconnecting with the identity of the worker. Then we have again the company know-how preservation uh, and uh, the data source uh, preservation uh, and also the need to uh, evaluate the training of the new workers uh, that is the only case uh, in which uh, uh, we are able uh, to reconnect uh, the data with uh, the identity, but uh, this uh, reconnection can be done uh, just by the um, education institute that is collaborating with the company uh, to train the new worker. Thanks, Caterina. <clears throat> Welcome. So now we have the last uh, project mm -hmm. about... Uh, the pro and cons, uh, please. <clears throat> Good morning to everyone. As uh, said before, uh, Rare Square project is uh, still a young project, started just uh, last December. So we are still uh, in an initial phase. We're dealing with uh, standardization. So with a preliminary uh, study and uh, overview of the available standard and the current situation for, for example, the four use cases uh, sectors. And with uh, also the possibility to um, study and uh, understand which is the situation for uh, other standards that could be uh, used and considered in the, the next phase of uh, the project. Um, this uh, first phase um, see uh, that um, is uh, needed to allow a fast transition, for example, from one uh, sector to a compatible adjacent uh, sector that, uh, of course, has to be uh, careful uh, carefully uh, identified and um, so to obtain all this information uh, we had uh, meetings with the use case partners and uh, the other partners of the project so next slide please 
Uh, for what concern the uh, standard that uh, could be of particular interest for uh, which are the objective of uh, objectives of of the project in uh, during the proposal uh, we uh, considered for example the ones that are uh, included in the, these three uh, categories. Um, for example, the interoperability of product data definition, uh, considering standards in this category could allow to uh, move uh, towards a constant growth and progress uh, based on the collaborative uh, effort between the companies that can communicate uh, more easily. Or, for example, oh, of course, the one in manufacturing uh, that um, having uh, this kind of standards could allow to have a common language to share uh, information about the product change, the pro pro product production chain, and uh, so to um, facilitate the exchange of information of technical information. And uh, uh, also the one uh, for the visualization that uh, are um, fundamental to allow to easily share, for example, uh, 3D data uh, also with uh, customer or uh, partners in uh, manufacturing. Um, of course, as uh, okay, thank you. Uh, no, no, okay, that's good. <laughs> to next slide. Um, furthermore, we also um, consider the applicable standard for the development of the digital twin and uh, uh, AI standards. That uh, these are just a few examples that maybe also <laughs> during the uh, the other projects uh, you had the opportunity to uh, deal with. And uh, so these are just a few examples uh, to have some tips for the next activities of the um, standardization for R square. And uh, this is also because uh, AI uh, is constantly uh, growing in these recent years, so it is important to have um, has basis uh, standards uh, that uh, are also <laughs> um, being uh, developing right right now. So there are they are quite uh, young standards, so it could be also useful to study this kind of standards to give to international or also national standardization organization some uh, uh, some important uh, conclusion about the uh, the standards and their pros and cons and uh, their weaknesses or uh, strengths so um, next slide um thanks to the um, constant uh, sharing of information with the use case uh, providers and the other partners uh, it was possible to obtain um almost complete picture of uh, the standards used in uh, the sector of the use case providers so he just uh, put the, the standards that they uh, shared with us, and um, this is fundamental to understand uh, which are, of course, the standards to take into account for the sector transition, and um, uh, also so next step for these uh, activities that are uh, ongoing uh, is to understand which are the standards for the um adjacent sectors for example the one that are reported on the rights are the one that the use case providers uh, suggested to us so to 
understand which are the steps necessary to the use case provider to jump in in these other sectors um, in a fast way uh, thanks to for example the <laughs> um, one the, the, the digital twin for example developed during uh, uh, Red Square project. So, um, okay, no, thank you. So, since uh, this study is just an initial phase, uh, it is still ongoing, it is not finished yet, and uh, further meetings uh, and uh, discussion with uh, the part technical partners are expected in the coming days and here I just reported for example some standards adopted by the technical partners for the communication um, and uh, so let's say that the, we would like to uh, identify um, yeah, advantages and disadvantages of uh, uh, the standards uh, for communication for AI and digital twin, uh, discussing with uh, these topics with uh, the partners. And uh, of course, uh, we will we are going to see uh, during the, the meeting uh, the uh, other adjacent sectors uh, uh, to focus on and uh, which are uh, the standards and certification needed for the transi transition. Um, so uh, this is um, necessary to uh, be able to develop uh, the final goal of uh, uh, Rare Spur uh, project. So, um, for now, uh, we don't have uh, more detail, but just this uh, quick overview uh, that is still ongoing and uh, um, hope to uh, have some important results about uh, uh, this topic. So, uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you very much. So, um, we have uh, um, a very interesting uh, presentation, not only of uh, the project, but also how uh, you are approaching uh, these uh, standards uh, initiatives. Uh, for sure, we saw several approaching because, uh, for example, kit for sme is a project uh, with only some months left, uh, left uh, while uh, RARE is a project um, started in uh, in some months ago. Uh, so uh, we have different approach and different um, initiative, but uh, I think it was uh, useful and uh, interesting to, to get each other, each other knowing what uh, we are doing. Um, if you want, uh, we have uh, some minutes uh, for uh, free discussion. Um, in the meanwhile, uh, while maybe you are thinking some questions, uh, I would like to summarize what we will do. So we will share this uh, podcast on each uh, uh, project uh, joining channels and then on uh, AI for Manufacturing channel. AI for Manufacturing is a community that um, was uh, uh, was born in a European project and that now is uh, going uh, um, to be every day uh, larger, and so we are uh, sharing information on uh, this, uh, on the in, also in this way. Um, regarding uh, the the other events that the Kid for MS, Kid for SME is going to organize, we will have uh, two other podcasts, uh, one in June and one in July. The first one, as said at the beginning, will be about standardization in the circular economy sector, while uh, the second one will be standardization and data management. Uh, I don't know if uh, anyone uh, would like to add something. Anyway, I would like to thank everybody for uh, uh, joining today and also uh, for the preparation of the material. And um, I hope that uh, we could uh, um, continue our uh, um, 
cooperation, uh, not only about the standardization, but also about other uh, topics um, in order to, to share our experience and uh, knowledge. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks a lot for the invitation. <laughs> Thank you. OK, so if uh, we do not have any other question, uh, we will uh, send you in the next days uh, the, the podcast so that you can uh, use it as you prefer. And uh, remember to tag uh, all uh, the projects that uh, join today in your channel so that we improve and enlarge also our uh, uh, project community. Thanks. Thanks, everyone, for being today and uh, have a nice week. See you, Serena. See you too. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye